Hello guys, welcome back to another video, and this is going to be part 3 of my January 2024 Road to Rank 1. In the last part, we started at 2948, just 23 points below first place, and then we lost twice in a row. Uh, and we were able to regain quite a bit of that loss, however we're still only at 2939, which means we are 32 points off first, and we are going to be trying to catch up. And 32 points if I win... My next game, like, my next, say, eight games or so, um, should get me there. But that is going to require winning the next uh, eight games. And as always, I will be using my trusty U.S.-German frontline deck to try to accomplish this. No changes since the last video. Um, so with that all being said, let's jump straight into the games. What a performance there by J King. J King, full plot armor. J King is pushing himself into the ranks of the legend. J King is our world champion. J King seven. What? The back to back cards world champion. All right, we have our first Japan of the day. I, I'm recording on the same day as the previous video. Um, so this is the first time I've queued into Japan all day. We're keeping the Pathfinders and the Greyhound just because these are things that can reactively deal with stuff like Type 94 TK early. We'll drop the Red Devils. This gives us the most options and gives him the least options. Um, he can Honorable Death this, but that's his whole turn, well, other than attacking us. Um, this lets us trade with 35T. This lets us play Greyhound trade. Um, if we draw 164th, it means we win the game. So we're going to do that. I'd say win the game, uh, sarcastically, but getting a 2-4 to the front line against Jaguar this early is huge. It's a turn. Uh, because it's Red Devils, he can't Raiding Brigade it yet. Dina doesn't actually kill it, and if he plays Dina, we... Or not, Audacity. Um, we kill the Aichi with Pathfinders. Um, instead, it forces him to just pass. Might mean he's going to Raiding Brigade this on the following turn. We'll preemptively get the Greyhound to the front line, because if he does play Raiding Brigade on the Red Devils, um, it means that's his whole turn, and then we can do Pathfinders, something like that. Signal, Recon, Sickle, in that order. So I'm going to take the one damage. Kills Greyhound, leaves us with a 2-2. Two -two. Um, then we suppress the signal regiment. So it's Japan Soviet, which means he's going to be trying to flood the board. And it's a very interesting, like, anti um, Japan Soviet, Japan Soviet <laughs> with the recons. But we definitely want to shut down the signal regiment as quickly as possible. And another recon. I could just get him with the Blitzkrieg. Like, he just passed his, like, entire turn. Obviously, that's a huge tempo loss. Um, just pushing Panzer Grenadier seems far better. Like, far better. <laughs> I'll also like to point out that we are once again starting second, which means I'm... I haven't gone back to triple check, but I'm pretty sure I've gone second every single game today, and this is game eight. Ooh, Jungle Warfare. Okay, that's a... So it's not actually flood, it is a destruction themed deck. That's good to know. Um Do I just Pathfinders to hit him for four? Um the alternative is Panzer Grand. Okay, well, he's running Destruction Jaguar, like, maybe he, like, Mito's this. But if he Mito's it, we just Pathfinder's push. 35T combined arms, drop him to 11, set up. Uh, pretty strong Blitzkrieg kill. I wonder if he's going to be running any healing. That turn is wild to me. So this is 6, 9, 15. He is just dead. 
these are this is two credits for five damage these are two credits for four damage so just get him with the uh, wall of 35 t's very very angry 35 t's now, that's a win um i find it difficult to imagine we're gonna get more than four points for this win but a win is a win is a win i will take the points and what is the officers club well shockingly that was a whole six points so up to two nine four five um and that's honestly pretty good it's a good sign for us let's get to the next game and keep trying these uh keep trying to get these higher point games all right we have another japan and we are going first this time so that's good um I'm just gonna keep this actually i could even consider keeping the fifth rangers because we have a one and a two um and devil's brigade is much easier to be a three Start with the Greyhound. This way, if he, he blitzes up any units, we try and push the 2-4. Pretty difficult for Japan to deal with the 2-4. I'm hoping it's Jagro. With this hand, I'm really hoping it's Jagro. If it's something like Japan, Finland, um, Japan, Finland, Salvage, that deck is quite strong against Frontline. Okay. Honorable death. Could do 164th pass. Pretty difficult for him to remove this. If honorable death could be literally anything, um, could be Japan Soviet, could be Japan Finland. I'm assuming he's not trading here. He does trade. That's insane. The respect that he puts on that. Um, we're gonna Devil's Brigade this because I'm. I don't want to do Pathfinders and then he plays Audacity and then I get farmed by the bomber. I'm gonna do Devils if he has Audacity. Uh, we start. We just take out the bomber with Pathfinder. I could just double 35T this. Now, this could be a deck with supply priorities. The fact that he's running Type 94 suggests that he's not running supply priorities. Cavalry as well. This is definitely an aggro deck. So my best guess at this point is he's Japan-Soviet aggro. And while that deck, I have seen that deck once or twice run... Um, Winter Warfare. It's very, very rare. You could also have Shinano. Um, but just getting two value trades here. Preventing any draw shenanigans. Like, he draws two cards from this, but there's kind of no way to stop him from drawing two cards from this with my current hand. On the Ascent to take two 35Ts, but they're one ones. That's bad, but On the Ascent is always bad against us, and that is uh, certainly low down on how bad that could get against us. We're just going to draw with Sherman, see what we get. He's not in a position to drop anything like a Take Liberty, so my hand size, I'm fine increasing my hand size in this moment. Developing the Sherman, it's slow, but it's the biggest thing in our hand, and also gives us more options. For example, like the M10, which we can now use to suppress the recon, potentially, if he has a signal regiment, suppress the signal regiment will be very useful. We still haven't seen the ally nation. In theory, it could even be Finland still, and just be a wild version of building Finland. Second honorable death. That's really annoying. These cards are so high tempo. Like, obviously, he's drawn us two cards, um, but just one credit, destroy a unit. Destroy a unit with three or less attack, but destroy a unit. So it is Germany. Um, that's probably best case scenario for us, because the Soviet deck can sometimes just out-flood you, basically. This guy has no shortage of card draw. We'll do Pathfinders to get Sherman to the front line. So it is just difficult for Jagro to deal with cards like Sherman. Um just raw stats like you know he, he, he can deal with it by doing something like type 93 yokosuka um and something has a four attack yokosuka that can hit into it but our hand's very reactive and if he starts dumping a lot of um cheap stuff it's his hands just going to empty out really quickly sendai's fine can 35p to take our pathfinders that's also fine like, his hand is getting smaller, and our health is at full. And if you compare uh, what's in his deck to what's in my deck, <laughs> you'll pretty quickly see 
a uh, issue for him if he wants to continue playing like this. Now, here's an interesting situation. I could just push Panzer Grenadiers 35T into Recon. I wouldn't hate suppressing Recon, just preventing the draw, but as previously mentioned, Suppress is just a really good effect. The question, like, do I use it here to prevent him from drawing in an additional card that could get him to draw into a unit that I would want to suppress, or do I just hold on to it until he draws that card and plays it? Um, I'm interested in getting Skytrain on the board, so maybe like a Skytrain M10 push 164th. The alternative is 20 pants are going to do is take out Recon. He's down two honorable deaths, so I think I'm going to go for this play. A big mistake I see a lot of people do is um, hold on to the combined arms and the 35 teeth. You don't need to do that, especially if you're playing other tanks in your deck. Like, if 35 T off of the 20 Panzer Grenadiers is the only tank in your hand, yeah, it's definitely worth considering holding on to it for combined arms. But if you can get a value trade, if you can get a tempo swing of any sort, just drop the tank. You'll find other tanks in the future, and if you're playing a deck like Frontline, like, you have great hands for Blitz tanks. You have all sorts of non-Blitz tanks, like M10s and Shermans. Okay, we've just kind of put him in an awkward situation. Like, he's drawn through, like, basically half his deck, and he has yet to deal damage to me as an aggro deck. You could just, like, drop a Take Liberty, hit the reset button, um, but, like, that might be what he's doing, like, drop another Cavalry. That's his 35T. Uh, AA Gun. Okay, so, I was going to do Sherman into Sendai, um, This is three, six, seven, eight. All right. So now, if you does want to go for a take liberty, um, we're not losing a lot. Like we have a decent man on the board. This is like a pretty good bombing raid. Like if you can do bombing raid, flood the board, like dump three or four units, and then take Liberty on the following turn. That would be really good for him. Another 35T. Ooh, is this going to be a Naval Supply Run turn? I mean, this... The Greyhound's going to kill something on a trade, no matter what. Like, if he has Bombing right here, this is pretty good for him. Yokosuka, he messed up the positioning to get the full attack, but it doesn't matter. Um, so he wins the 50-50. Gets the trade. Any sort of blitz one drop would be good here. Now the question is, do we place, like, Skytrain obviously seems like a good play on this board. I'm leaning towards 99th TIR though. Just because this way I'm, it's difficult, and by difficult I mean virtually impossible for him to answer both of these, whereas Skytrain, if he has Raiden Brigade top deck, and I played Skytrain and Skytrain gave me Jasko, um, you know the game's kind of over. And speaking of the game being kind of over, he's just going to surrender. I wiped his board. His hand is very small, very empty. He played most of his card draw already. And he's a pretty high-ranked player because that is a plus 12. My goodness. We are just rocketing up the uh, ranks now. And we're just one point under no one. And looking back, we, this is our peak elo. Um, before we lost the two games, we were at 29.56. This is our peak elo. We are 14 points off of first. Let's get to the next game. All right, we have Soviets. We're going second. And 164th is... Soviets is sort of the one matchup where keeping 164th is not a guaranteed. He full mulligans. Um, we have a Greyhound, so I will keep the 164th just because Greyhound won 164th push on two. It's pretty difficult for him to be able to stop the 164th trigger. That would require a red dawn. Um, and if he red dawns that, we're fine. We will toss back the other ones. Did we just get back the same cards in a slightly different order? <laughs> Okay. Um, 
I mean, we have nothing to go on what he's playing. He passes on one. It's becoming more and more likely it's Soviet control based on the mulligan size. Yep. Bryansk. And this is going to be amazing. Skytrain. Uh, Soviet control historically has basically no way of removing planes. Um, and is not very rarely paired with the US in a control setting where it's going to be running something like Suppress. Um, so there's a pretty high likelihood that the Skytrain is going to stick on the board for a while. It's also, of course, possible that he immediately drops a 52k, kills Skytrain, and then I can't remove the 52k, and I just start getting farmed by an artillery, and we lose the game. Um, but hopefully that doesn't happen. So it's Soviet Britain. It's probably a push OTK, I'm not going to lie. Um, in which case, the Blitzkrieg's good, but we need to get a move on. Um... I'm going to vote. Nah, it's just worth getting this guy up. And we'll hit this guy for one. This way we're set up for Blitzkrieg, trade, trade, face, face. Depending on what he does. If he plays an armored train or something, we'll probably just Hellcat into it. And push up 164, get another hit in or something. There's the armored train. This is also an interesting situation because it kind of looks like I might have a um, the Stars and Stripes. Like I might be scared to play another unit. He could hit 506 to drop a naval brigade. Buffs the support line. And buffs the only thing in the support line that can't attack as well. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Oh, it's, and it buffs for the, uh, the 39th rifles. Top deck 39th rifles. I mean, it would have been actually better if it, for him if it buffed this 506, because then he takes two things out of the front line. But this is still brutal. Okay, it might just be Sherman time. Try to find some utility, like find some suppress, find strap bombing. Okay, now that we have one suppressed, we're going to want to focus down one Bryansk in particular. Um, can push Devils. He has a board clear. Like we, maybe he runs Kyber bombing, which would be very, very bad. And the first Jasko. So... Still don't know if it's control or combo. Um, if it is combo, we have to gone absolutely nowhere in preventing him from doing the combo. However, he hasn't really played a lot of card draw. Like, he's played a lot of guards and 39th and one stiff upper lip. So, he could really be anything. Forest takes out the Greyhounds. Might have Sickle. Might be able to push a Bryansk this turn. that engineers off the top as well we might end up playing the m10 on the engineers um i think that's probably worth more and the buff lands on the jasko oh my god enemy contact it's almost certainly combo now and i can't suppress it and I literally can't do anything. Oh, this is so bad. Do I just suppress the engineers and pass? I guess I can suppress the engineers and hit this for one. Okay, so if it is combo, we want to limit the healing. Um, like, uh, it, we could have done 5th Rangers hit Bryansk. 5th Rangers drops to 4-1, but then my only play is push Skytrain, which I don't want to do. 
He's 99th, so pretty well useless. I mean, 25 cards needs the full combo at the moment. He's got no damage to the HQ, so that's fine. He could, like, push Snowstorm, which would be really annoying. Just immediately trades. That's really good for us. That is a really, really good for us. By the Swords is less good for us, but, um, you know. Also, Jasko stops him from killing us. As long as Jasko's on board, he can't combo us. Like, just do the, the regular push-push. Observer Core implies that he has, he might have Great Patriotic in hand. Um, however, we also needed it to not overdraw, so. Take that with a grain of salt. Um, do I just push an A-date? I feel like we just push an A-date. He has no access to suppress. He probably doesn't run retreat. Um, so this could force him to do a red dawn. Like, it, worst case scenario, he has naval brigade, but like, I mean, if he just has every single Soviet elite in the top half of his deck, then uh, good for him, I guess. The 506th off of Skytrain is fine. I mean, units are units. His health total is very low. So, like, if we can get a single good Blitzkrieg turn, um, we're chilling. It's going to take two turns to set up Blitzkrieg lethal. But maybe we, we don't need to go for lethal. We just need to drop him low enough that he can't combo. Or at the very least, needs Great Patriotic Ward to combo. He's thinking. Well, actually, I guess Jasko doesn't stop combo, because he just drops the two Red Dons into Jasko. Drops Depths of Winter. This is fine. Complete board reset. I'm happy with. Uh, we don't want to push too many of these guys to the front line. Or maybe we do. So that showed that he was unable to remove... Um, Do I want to trade these guys out? Probably just getting damage in now is good. We have no Blitz tanks in hand. And no immediate card draw in hand. Does he have the Naval Brigade? Come on, dude. Like, could you not? Please. <laughs> Stiff upper lip. He needs to... Spend two credits to not overdraw. Does he have third Briance? That'd be the most talented thing he could do. Sickle's fine. He overdraws a card. This is where half track would be good. Um. I think we just have to drop the Panzer Gren tank into this. Um, I think we commit to the four units. Put them under pressure. If he wipes the board, we can still do like Devils 164th, 22nd, 22nd. Milling Red Dawn's a good sign. Um, he, if it was a push, we would just win the game, probably. Not, not exactly, but if it's a push, it's very good for us. Red Dawn's, like, not bad, but you run ISU and also have Winter Warfare ISU in hand. Okay. Fine. Um... We'll drop everything, because Winter Warfare just takes out three of these things. So if, if I don't drop 
the 35T as well. He can just Winter Warfare, take the front line with ISU. Um, if he goes for a supply shortage type of play, it means ISU can't get to the front line, which is good. Okay, we draw Sherman, but we have no Blitz US units unless Pathfinders is able to trigger. Yep, there's Winter Warfare. Place Winter Warfare first, so the buff goes. And the buff lands on the Devils. Drops himself to 12. Is he just going for it? Does he have push push? Are you kidding? Or did he think he had lethal with the tank? Oh my god, dude. Come on. <laughs> okay, well, whatever. Sure. Briansk, Briansk train. 39. Engineer Battalion. Naval Brigade. <laughs> ISU. That's a minus 18. And uh, we are right back where we were at the start of this. So let's get to the next game and hopefully get into a uh, more more interesting and more competitive match. All right, Britain. Um, keeping the Greyhound for a one drop. I'm not going to keep two Greyhounds since they're very slow and... Against Britain, you're trying to be slightly more fast. Like, you're looking for uh, 99th, 35Ts. We find a 35T, but no infantry. 164th top deck would be really good. Devil's top deck would be fine. Um, another 35T is pretty mid. Uh, is this going to be the first Britain rank for that we've seen all day? Nope, it's going to be another push combo. I blame Birder for this. Okay. Well, this is a hand. Um, we're getting infantry now, so that's good. <laughs> Let me guess. Supply shortage? Yes. Where does the buff land? Lands on the gray hand. Um, that's fine, to be completely honest. We can just drop him to two health next turn. We cannot drop him to two health next turn. Um, it's not push. Which means it's pin. Probably. Could just be more generic control of some sort. So get the big guys on the outside in case it is pin. Glamour boys. As long as this isn't pin, Wellington is not. He's just dead. Okay. Well, turn six win. Okay, then. Um, <laughs> Just very fast game. Uh, I mean, sometimes the game just gives you entirely blitz tanks and a blitzkrieg, and your opponent doesn't play units. And that was an immediate bounce back of 10 points. I will take that. Um, so now we're only 8 points down from where we are, and only 22 points down from rank 1. So let's get to the next game. Alright, Germany. Um, looked like that might have been a full mulligan. At least a very large mulligan. Keep it the devils, send back everything else, and he surrenders. Okay. Um, I mean, sometimes that happens. And that was plus 5 points. So we will take that. Not ask questions and move on to the next game. All right, Japan, keep the Blitz units. And I'm going to keep the M10 because we have two Blitz units. Just because the turn one signal and you can't find M10 um, is you're going to lose like 80% of the time. Uh, especially to Japan Soviet, just because of how much unit generation they have. It's a pretty good hand. 34th, as long as this doesn't pull up Betty. This is an interesting situation, because if he pushes up a 2-1, or like a, any 1 health blitz unit, he just kind of gets farmed. Um, but on the other hand, he wants to not just sit back and do nothing, presumably. You could also have a Betty here. Devil's Brigade is going to be able to take up Betty, but not for a turn. It's in German. So that's interesting. Um...
I think we take out the Japanese unit for Rising Sun reasons. It's an infantry. Um, like, we're not fatiguing him out of his deck. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you that much. That screams early. Um, take liberty to me. Do I want to play the PIR? I think I want to play the PIR. If he pushes, I can do Devil's Brigade, take out Type 93, hit Akita. Hopefully he doesn't have like 35D Cavalry Regiment, last card in hand, take Lib. Um, Mido is perfectly fine. I want the best play around. Probably like this. Hits face, which is a little concerning, considering that he's a bit more burn-oriented and we have no healing in deck. We can suppress Mido, of course. Pass. Um, okay. gonna push both units like I, I don't really care if he trades this like the Mito does two damage that's fine we're gonna have suppresses in the future we need to put him under pressure maybe I could have played gray hand instead of pushing considering the clear desire for him to play take liberty um bombing raid I mean, bombing raid's never going to be bad for him is he really considering trading the sendai Is he considering pushing the Sendai? Okay, well, either way, we're gonna just try to keep the zero op units going. Take the front line, stop him from doing stuff like Rising Sun, start pressuring him, him down, try to end the game quickly, considering he is playing a burn deck. Also means that we can dump the rest of our hand while operating all of these for free. Oh my goodness, this guy runs. This guy's, this guy's doing some wild things with his deck. Try to just prevent all of the damage. Remove the destruction effect from Hayabusa. Kill Hayabusa so he can't hit face. Um, kill Sendai to get units back on board. Soul of Old Japan. That's terrifying. If he has like Hien and Akika or something, I'm going to be very sad. And probably flame this guy. Okay, that is terrifying. That needs to not exist. Um, so PIR guarantees to buff itself. So I'm actually kind of fine with elephants being on board. Thirty-five T. Presumably, he can't go for value trades in the situation. Um. Yeah, let's just put him under pressure. Sheeden. Yeah, I don't think there's a way we lose this. Like, maybe the last man into something. Last card in hand is Rising Sun. Okay, so that's a pretty good win over Jagro. Um, well played, considering his deck from this guy. And we are... Oh, that's only a plus three. Um, well, we're back at 29.57, much faster than I expected to be. So let's uh, try to close the last 14 points and get to rank one. All right, we have US, and we are going first, but we're going first with no one drops. He keeps three cards, so we have to fill Mulligan, and this is very, very bad. If he's frontline, this is awful. If he's ramp, this is kind of fine, but uh, if he plays a card this turn, we are in a bad spot. He does not play a card this turn. Um, card 35T. 
I think I play Devils next turn. The, the weird thing about 35T, um, if you're playing a deck like, okay, it's playing less Tari Bliss. Um, I mean, we're just going to ping it. Playing 35T on two, if you have nothing better to do, is good, assuming you will, you are playing against a deck where you will immediately be trading with it. They might immediately trade into it themselves. Or if you have nothing better to do in the following turns. Uh, in this case, my turn three was going to be Devil's Brigade, even if I had a 35T on board. And he's not going to be taking the front line, which means my follow-up is probably going to be... Um, 35T. I mean, considering between just, like, dropping a fifth rangers, um, pushing 35T face Greyhound, pushing 35T face don't play Greyhound, and double 35T here. I think on the following turn, I want to probably be doing 20 Panzer Grenadiers to the front line. This puts him under the most immediate pressure, and it's a little awkward for him to use this, whereas fifth rangers immediately could get traded out by fifth rangers. But if he does that, that's fine. And then I could follow up even with Devil's Brigade, double 35T. My worry about the 35Ts is that he plays, like, supply shortage, supply priorities or something. It's amazing, like, how quickly things can turn around, assuming your opponent's not playing another tempo deck. Like, if my opponent was playing mid-range, this game would be, like, basically over already. Uh, but fortunately for us, he is playing ramp, which means he's basically done nothing. I think we go for the putting him under pressure play. Because he might glamour boys, um, and then we can suppress hit face for seven. And then he's still a turn off carpet bombing. And then if he supply shortages, he we just hit face, like Sherman hit face, maybe Panzer Grenadiers push up hit face. So this means he can carpet on the following turn, um, which is worth keeping in mind. We can go for the Panzer Grenadiers, but he could clear that. However, it's credit efficient. I can even make one of the tanks a 4-4 instead of attacking with Devil's Brigade. But I kind of want to be damage efficient. I'll make this trade, actually, though. Uh, so now if he does do carpet bombing, the Panzer Grenadier sticks. I mean, he's he's played Lost Terribles, but he has yet to play. Um, why am I saying Lost? I, I'm, I'm taking Spanish lessons. That's why I'm saying Lost. I, I do know how to speak French, I swear. Um, less terribles. It just sounds better with loss, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, well he's made a 12-12. That's like never getting to the front line, and if it does, we can suppress it, but he has made a 12-12, and we drew a Blitzkrieg. So, <laughs> good game. Um, I mean, we were winning that game like 9 times out of 10. 99 times out of 100, really, even without the Blitzkrieg there. But that ends it faster and gives us a shocking five points. So we are now just nine points away, two games, hopefully. Um, so let's get to the next one. All right, we have another U.S. and we're going second again. However, I feel like it's much, much, much more likely this guy's frontline. Um, just, I mean, statistically speaking, it's like going to be frontline nine times out of ten. So it's... Um, I also think I might recognize this guy's username. It's tempting to keep three one sixty fourths. The problem with keeping three sixty one six or two one sixty fourth and the Greyhound is um, card quality, which is why I was considering keeping fifth rangers there. Like, it, depending on how things go, you might just dump all of your hand much too quickly. He full mulligan though, which is a good sign. Uh, Red Devils is not a good sign though. Because that's the other issue with 164th, is they're really good if your opponent's playing not Red Devils. Because um, they're little cheap dudes who can toss in. But with Red Devils, um, the fact that he's stopping, the fact that he full mulliganed and is now stopping, I think it might still be ramp. Like, I think he might be considering... Nope, okay, never mind. 
I was going to say maybe he's considering a... Um... Whoever just double tossed, make it make Greyhound a three five. Sucks a lot into um I could also just do one sixty fourth, one sixty fourth pass. Which I kinda like. This way he can't play the um M ten on tempo for like with tempo like he can't play it to remove the plus two plus two he could try hitting with greyhound and then suppressing whichever gets buffed um but also this way he can't push devils realistically i mean i suppose he could 35t like if he has second 35t and pushes devils and then double trades and both buffs land here then it's two credits to hit Devils, then I have one credit left, and he has two 35Ts in the front line. Um, but 35Ts don't draw with Sherman. I suppose worst case scenario is he has 99 on 35T, kills Greyhound, pushes Devils. In which case, i probably just still do Greyhound, hit, hit, kill Devils. Or possibly just suppress pass. Um... Okay. Interesting. In the Navy. Oh, and of course, the buff can land here. I, I'm dumb. Um, <laughs> so this entire time, I forgot that by playing both 164ths on the board at the same time, the, the buffs can hit each other. Now, I could just suppress this. It goes to a 2-2 two -two with off cost. Um, I could also take the opportunity to kill Red Devil. So I think I will do. Stop the Sherman. Um, and this would be a pretty good Sherman turn for him. Uh, if I just did, like, M10 pass or M10 trade. We're at 16, and he can put us to 13 for free. Um... I don't have to worry about any Blitzkrieg shenanigans yet, but if he just goes, like, face pushes fifth rangers, um, it can get a little awkward. Does trade push fifth rangers? We're chilling. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. Well, just take out the U.S. unit. Um, I feel like I'm playing this game pretty poorly up until this point. Certainly, I've been getting punished um, for the lines I'm going for. If he has second Devil's Brigade, that's going to be very bad. But it's also very unlikely. Um, so, you know, if he wants to Greyhound into this with three credits, I'm fine with that. Um, top deck Duress. Sherman to not draw. Um, interesting. Well, this is... Really my only play. If he has strap bombing, he has strap bombing. Um, if he has push Sherman, he has push Sherman, but then we get some pretty good trades. He just goes face here. Second Juress. Hmm. That's an issue. I think we just do Greyhound to the front line. Try to slow him down. I don't know if this card in hand is Blitzkrieg or if it's Sherman. Um... But either way, keeping his PIR back for a turn is good. Okay, so he did find Sherman. If I just do 99 lost two units to the front line. Um, I can do 164th to the front line Sherman. That actually looks better. Much, much better than wasting this. And then I can just push Greyhound or Devils to the front line. Okay. Um, I, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't go for the 5th Rangers play. That play's insane. Uh, that play would have been awful.
this slows him down a lot. He can't Sherman. Um, he can't do a lot with tanks in the front line. Buff falls on my Sherman, which is generally a good thing. Um, we have Devil's Brigade to take out this. It's not a second in the Navy. If it was, the both units would be removed, but... Okay, now, now Panzer Grenadiers. We're getting to the turns where Panzer Grenadiers can just start farming. He has nothing. Okay. Um, I don't know what's in his hand, but clearly it did not work out for him. Um, and we were able to take the win and hopefully get some good points for that. Yep, we got eight points for that. We are 2970, one point below Leo. So let's jump into what is hopefully the last game of the video um, and get that point. All right, here we are. Final boss. Soviets keeps two cards. Um, I think I'll keep like this. I'll, I'm, I'm keeping 99 because of its combo. This can start putting, allowing us to put pressure on quickly. And if it's tokens, um, I think it's against tokens. You generally do get the front line. Now, we are going second, so of course he could just have um, line of engagement on two. 164th helps us with that. It means we're getting a 2-4 devils to the front line against line of engagement. Okay. Our opponent is thinking. Maybe they're thinking about engineers on one or not. Like, getting ahead. Oh, okay. Um, they're probably just alt-tabbed. <laughs> so, I don't think there's a way for them to kill devils on two, which means we're guaranteed a 99th devils. I might go for line of engagement here. Keep operation. Now he definitely can't kill devils on two. And second 99th. Now, a double 99th, like... He, he might run hammers. Like, he could just hammer. It's not impossible that he runs hammers. Um, however, if we can get double 99th, it's going to make a huge Red Devils. Honestly, I'm thinking about 99th on the um, 164th to play around hammer and just killing two guys as well. Like, against tokens, it's really about just control. Um, like, here he can play a guy, um, Frontal Assault. If he plays Frontal Assault here, he can't kill Devils, which means he has to just trade into the 164th, which means we can then uh, second 99th. Take out that push 99th, probably. Especially if it gets buffed, and it does get buffed. So buff this. Take out a token, push up, and we have survived uh, the first massive wave of tokens, the first buff. Um, he could trade here, frontal assault, and things are looking bad with serves. So there's four tokens, three have blitz, and three other cards in hand. If he drops the blitz one to trade out this 3-3, three, three, we are chilling. Hmm. That's less good. Um, okay. So again, just trying to control the units he has. We have two, three attack units in the front line. Um, is the one in hand with Blitz? Probably. Like, it's possibly made a mistake here, but I, I could have checked that, I suppose, before killing them. I will trust my opponent to have not trolled that hard and still has the one with Blitz. Okay, so first no surrender, we can take out two of these units. Any blitz card will let us take out three. And there is any blitz card. I do want the possibility of this getting buffed. Okay, so we've answered the first series of checks. We're now in the situation where we are out of responses. So if he has like second no surrender, um, like frontal assault or something, we are done for. 
Okay, so his hand is six tokens, one other card, and a KV on board. I could suppress the KV and then draw. Seems like a reasonable play. Oh, this doesn't actually draw. Um, I could just still play Sherman, but we will go face. Also takes out the heavy armor, which is really good. Um, and hopefully this is the last game of the day because I'm starting to make some mistakes. Um, I need to take a break, eat some breakfast. I haven't eaten in like 12 hours. Okay. Top decks, draw three. Did he play the one with Blitz? He does not have any with Blitz. Okay, well, classic token turn. Um, his hand is entirely full of Blitzkrieg is lethal. No Blitzkrieg. Can we afford to start pressuring, though? Can we afford to play Sherman, or should we go for unit removal? Um, so what is this? 6, 10, we put him to 4. Yeah, we put him to 4, and then all hell breaks loose. Uh, and I find it quite unlikely that we're going to be able to break through. Um... I think we just have to go for it at this point. Force him to have a series of checks. Deep operation overdraw is very good. Um, he can, of course, like he doesn't need to buff these. He can just trade out all these guys, um, then play a no surrender. Just try to flood the front line. We have Greyhounds if he floods it with cheap guys. Um, That's fine. Two, three, four. That's bad. Um, so it's four to take out all of this. Seven. We're one credit off. Okay. Um... Now the question is, do I drop the M10 on the motors now or, or not? I might just push the motors if I do that. Which I guess isn't terrible. Um, I could also push two Greyhounds. I think getting the other Panzer Gren out is better. I do not want motors in the front line if I, it can be avoided. I would like to rely on the suppress to get through guard. Um sort of surprise effect. We also can hold in the pocket in case, you know, he like does some massive uh, unity of strength type of play. He does push both up, no surrender. He doesn't have the credits to play any more buffs, um, so that's good. Okay, so this is happening. This is three, four, five. So what's definitely happening? This is definitely happening. This is definitely happening. I think this is happening. And then, what is that? Two, four. He's left with one guy. Um, what else can I do? Three, four. Yeah, there's not really a play that doesn't leave him with a guy left.
Okay. So, he's running out of cards. He has four cards in hand. Um, he can't kill us with a single dude. He's down two no surrenders and two deep operations. So, his ability to flood the front line is drastically reduced. Um, we still have the M10 to suppress a guard. That's a very good sign. Light Infantry Alliance Alliance. So this is surely lethal, right? Um, six, seven. Hmm. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out the cheapest way. So it's three to take out one of them. Six, seven, eight, yeah. And we got him. And that means we got rank one and can get out of this game. I hate playing against tokens. Oh my goodness. Well played by him. Um, not so well played by me. Plus six. Okay, man. We're just getting the high rank games uh, right at the end here. None of, none of this plus four nonsense. But we are rank one. Um... For now, I, I fully expect Leo, Noen, maybe Nubius to uh, play for it. I know his self care is climbing fast with Jagro. Uh, I know 66 better is climbing, although he seems about to be falling at the moment. Now, uh, what's interesting is all of these players here, 5th, um, 6th, and 7th, and I think Spoker in 8th. I'm not certain about that. Definitely Stanislav in ninth. These players have not played in, like, a week. Um, so I, I think they're just content with top um like top 34 i'm assuming maybe they'll all come on in like the last day or two but for now we are rank one and if you got to the end of this video thank you very much for watching i will catch you in the next one subscribe if you haven't already